the return on investment of a orthopedic uh, fellowship. In this video, I'm going to talk about that today. What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. So, there's a uh, article that just came out, the return on investment of an orthopedic fellowship training. This is a 10 year update that I thought was really interesting and I'm going to talk about that in this video today. So for those who don't know the way it works, you do four years of medical school, five years of general orthopedic uh, surgery residency, and then you do an optional one year fellowship. There are some fellowship programs out there that are two years, and there are some people that do two fellowships. Well, 90% of people in orthopedics do a fellowship. This is mainly due to uh, making yourself more marketable after you complete all of your training or if you want to better your skill sets, say for instance, you went to a residency program that didn't do a lot of trauma surgery and you want to become a orthopedic trauma surgeon. Well, you, most people would do a trauma fellowship to increase their skill set or to get more cases or to get more experience. Well, what a lot of people don't talk about during this path and along our training is the financial impact that doing a fellowship has. We're just under the impression that, uh, you know, we're going to do a fellowship and it's common that a lot of people do a fellowship, so I'm going to do a fellowship. And I kind of felt that way just because everyone else was doing a fellowship. I didn't want to be the only person not doing the fellowship. But a year before me, the residents who graduated, there was one person who did not do a fellowship and worked as a general orthopedic surgeon, went straight into practice. The year before that, there was another individual who went straight into practice without doing a fellowship. So it's about 90% of people that do a fellowship. This is only for orthopedics. I can't speak about other specialties out there, uh, but we're gonna jump into this article. So a couple of terms that uh, you should be aware about that they talk about in this article. Number one is NPV. This is the uh, summation of all future cash flows of an investment minus the initial cost. The initial cost is the um, initial loss of income during the period of fellowship training. And this is the income that would have been otherwise made by a graduating resident minus the salary from the uh, fellowship. They also talk about the break-even point, and for each specialty in orthopedics, this was calculated and defined as a point in time in which your initial investment costs equals the net return. Um, that's the break-even point. And there's a lot of different fellowships out there that you can do after your general orthopedic surgery residency. You can do foot and ankle surgery, you can specialize in hand surgery, spine surgery, trauma surgery, oncology, sports medicine, joint replacement, shoulder and elbow. So lots of different options that you can do. Well, which of these, you know, gives you the best return on your investments? Because I have other videos talking about how much a fellow makes. And for most people, depending on what part of the country that you're in, most people anywhere between 55,000 to 60,000 to 70,000, 75,000. But if you graduate from residency and go straight to work, well, you know, you can make up to 600,000, $700,000 right off the bat. So you have to calculate, you know, that missed income during that year. And for a lot of people, this could be $600,000. So, and what is the ROI or return on investment on doing this fellowship year? This article talked about from 1984 to 2014, the number of advertised kind of general orthopedic surgery jobs decreased from 95% to 32% whereas job openings requiring fellowship training increased from 5% to 68%. So a lot of jobs that are out there when you finish your training, uh, the job openings, they're looking for people that are fellowship trained. And that's a marketing you know, strategy that, that, that you can use. You can say I'm fellowship trained in hand surgery. I'm fellowship trained in orthopedic trauma surgery. You know, that just makes you more marketable. So there are a lot less jobs out there for people that are 
graduating and going straight into the workforce. You also have to consider the medical school debt. Um, over the last few years, this is actually cr increasing. The average medical student will come out of medical school with about $200,000 in debt. And during this training, you know, a lot of people don't pay back any of their student loans and that they defer all of their payments. Well, you know, this can have a, you know, significant financial impact as well just because that additional year of not making any payments to your student loan, this could mean that you're paying an additional 25000 or an additional 10000 15000 to your overall uh, loan balance just by not making any payments uh, during your fellowship year. But that's to... That's only if uh, you don't make any payments um, uh, during your fellowship year. So they gathered this information uh, from a database that um, you know gives us the average salaries for orthopedic surgeons, and they pull all of these uh, orthopedic surgeons and they ask them, "Hey, what is your salary in this particular aspect of the uh, part of the U.S.?" They were not able to collect data for shoulder and elbow surgeons as well as they excluded the data from orthopedic oncologists, but just because the people that responded to the survey, uh, there were only 12 surgeons, so not a lot to uh, draw from that. The American Association of Medical Colleges and the AMGA, which reports kind of the median or the average salaries for orthopedic surgeons, and it's something that we use in the negotiation process when talking to different hospitals and, different, and with different contracts. Um, they reported that the mean PGY6 fellow salary was around 68000 and the general orthopedic surgeon compensation, if you go straight into practice, it was around 633000 So the investment cost was around $565,000. That's what you lose. That's essentially what I'm losing this year from doing this fellowship. So you have to uh, take that into consideration. When talking about the uh, break-even point, and we, we said that the break-even point is the time where you, your investment cost equals the net return. So the uh, break-even point uh, for each specialty, we can see here that the break-even point for spine surgery had the shortest uh, one being at five years. That means it takes about five years after you're done with all your training to um, even break even and even start making money. So, but some specialties like sports medicine, uh, trauma surgery, you know, they said sports medicine, they don't break even until 26 years of been in practice, uh, which is uh, pretty uh, crazy. So in financial terms, an investment can be considered advantageous if the NPV is greater than zero. And then some specialties, uh, this can be considered a disadvantage. So fellowship training in hand surgery or pediatrics or foot and ankle uh, meet those uh, that, that criteria, which means they have a negative uh, return on investment or it takes a number of years uh, to even break even. So this figure here shows the net present value of the different specialties. And you can see that spine has a positive NPV the other subspecialties like pediatrics, foot and ankle, hand surgery has a, a negative one. You can see foot and ankle ha definitely has a uh, higher NPV than uh, the uh, other specialties out there. And I, I, I think this is more due to the uh, reimbursement rates for foot and ankle surgeries. The uh, surgeries in spine surgery, uh, the, they're compensated at a higher rate uh, say, for instance, you do one surgery in spine surgery, which, you know, you may get reimbursed $3,000. One surgery in foot and ankle surgery, $1,000, $800. So, um, you know, the, the reimbursement rates are a lot uh, different, which can affect this uh, NPV uh, value. So I thought this was a pretty interesting article that talked about the return on investment of doing a fellowship. You know, throughout my whole training, you know, it's been pounded in my head that, um, you know, most people do a fellowship. You know, you have to think about what fellowship that you're going to do. Um, so I, I felt a little bit of pressure uh, to do a fellowship, which I'm glad I, I did one because it makes me more marketable. But this article really didn't take into consideration the loan interest 
that uh, students have that builds up over time. If you go uh, right into practice and you start making money, well, you can start paying back your student loans a lot sooner. It also didn't talk about the different uh, practice models, academic versus private practice versus being an employee. This will affect how much you get paid as a physician. And the, uh, the quote that they gave about $600,000 in terms of the compensation for a general orthopedic surgeon, well, this differs in terms of your specialty. Spine surgery usually makes more than the hand surgeons or the foot and ankle or the pediatric orthopedic surgeons. So um, I don't think this article really took that into consideration. But it does, um, you know, brings to light that you have to think about um, you know, that additional year. It's a lot of money that you're losing out on. Well, if you want to go into foot and ankle surgery or hand surgery, pediatrics, your return on investment is not going to be as robust as if you went into spine surgery. So you have to uh, take that into uh, consideration. You don't have to do a fellowship. It's not required. But, you know, hospitals are asking for it, different employees, different contracts. They're, they're asking, you know, did you, um, you know, receive fellowship training? So 90% of people do a fellowship. And um, I imagine when this article came out, a lot of other people are going to question whether they are going to do a fellowship versus going straight into practice. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how people respond uh, to this survey. Another thing this article didn't talk about is the other forms of income. When you are out in practice, uh, there are different ways that you can make money from consulting to teaching, ancillary income, which is money from like different investments that you have in your surgery center or different equipment that you own. Well, th this can be a you know substantial amount of money for a lot of people. This can be $100,000 a year or $200,000 per year in addition to what you're making as a surgeon um, in clinic and in surgery. So this article really didn't talk about that. And some people make more money on their ancillary income than they do as a just a surgeon. So uh, they may make, let's say, $400,000 as a surgeon, but they bring home $500,000 in ancillary income, um, which this article didn't talk about. Also, moonlighting and fellowship. Some people work extra hours. Moonlighting is, you know, taking a position or a job in addition to your normal kind of fellowship. Or if you're out in practice and you work at one hospital, well, you can moonlight, which means you work at additional hospital to make extra money. This article really didn't talk about that. There are a lot of fellows out there that moonlight and take extra, you know, jobs for money. Um, you know, you have to take those numbers into consideration also. So, you know, I think this article, you know, just brings to light that uh, you really have to take into consideration what you're losing out on when you do additional year of training. Um, for some specialties, this can be a lot of money. And for some specialties, the return on investment, it can take uh, anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20 years just to break even just because you did a fellowship year. Uh, what are your thoughts? Put it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.